Amen. People wonder why I don't stand there to preach. Why I come here. I want to be closer to the person where they talk to. So that I will see your face and know your reaction. Whether the thing where they talk, they enter or you know they enter. So that I can change gear. Praise the Lord. When I'm preaching and what I know is the truth. And instead of you to say, hey, God have mercy on me. You don't frown your face like this. I go change gear. Say it harder. Say it harder so that you will know. See, I have only 30 minutes more. Today is a special service day, so please bear with me if I take extra 10 minutes on top. Amen. But I want to say something. Amen. It's an exhortation. It's just an exhortation. John chapter 21. Can we stand up? Can we stand up? I'm picking for the text. Very few minutes. I may not even reach that time before we close. It's just an exhortation. Amen. Somebody needs to hear it. This same scripture. Four days ago, in the bathroom, I heard the voice of the Lord talking to me and quoting that scripture. John chapter 21. And I knew he was telling me to come and share it with you. Praise the Lord. Are we there from verse 15? And I'm reading it up to verse 17. Praise the Lord. Verse 15. So when he, when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Love it than me more than this. He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, What did he say? Say it. Yes, he said, Feed my lambs. Verse 16. He said to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, Love it thou me. He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him again, what did he say? Feed my Thank you. Feed my sheep. The last verse, 17. He said unto him, the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, love it thou me. Peter was grieved because he said unto him, the third time, love it thou me. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, what did he say? What did he say? Feed my sheep. May the Lord have blessed you to the reading of his word. God bless you. Be seated. Hallelujah. And my exhortation is titled Feeding the Sheep and the Lambs. Feeding the Sheep and the Lambs. Something special about this Peter. Among all the twelve disciples. Two commissions have been given to him in the scriptures. Two, two commissions. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus Christ gave him the keys to the kingdom. Correct? He gave him the keys to the kingdom. He singled him out. And now in John 21, the Lord again is singling him out and telling him to feed the sheep and feed the lambs. Praise the Lord, there is something special about Peter. I remember Peter is a symbol of faith. Hallelujah. Take note of something that my attention was called to. Why did he ask him three times? Peter, do you love me? Why did he ask him three times? The only way you may have other reasons, but what resistance are very clear to me remember a prophecy Jesus Christ gave him before the cock, cock will crow how many times will you deny me Peter three times Peter denied him therefore I will not be surprised that Jesus will ask him also to repeat I love you how many times 
three times. I believe that. You denied me three times. You must say it before the whole of these apostles. And I also believe that there's something about confession. The denial that he denied Jesus Christ three times was the knowledge of those other apostles. And I believe that they would have been looking at him as some, 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 some person that betrayed Jesus and you want to take leadership position. And I believe that Jesus wanted him to use his mouth and get connected again to the flow of the ministry, the apostolic ministry. He said it to the hearing of the apostles three times, yeah, I love you. That's one thing I learned from that statement. Again, I also discover that the love that Jesus was asking Peter to confess was different from the love that Peter was answering him. There is agape love and there is filial love. Do you love me? Peter says, ah, I love you. It's very easy to say I love you to somebody, praise the Lord, that you know you are loving somebody because of something you want to get from him. That's filial love. It is contractual love. There is something you are doing that is making me love you. The day that thing ceases, no more love. That is filial love. Amen. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you. The day you are telling your wife, I love you, I love you. The day she just turns, you turn again. This useless woman, I regret the day I marry you. So that love that you are telling her before is filial love. Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yeah, I love you. And many of us, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He's my friend. Sunday school rhymes. Amen. Amen. But wait until it looks as if this Jesus has forsaken you. Then you will know what type of love you love him. And Jesus Christ was trying to let Peter know it is this filial love you love me that made you to deny me three times. Think again. Do you love me? It is agape love. Selfless love. Sacrificial love. He loved us until he gave his life for us. The love that you will love a man until you can die for him. The love that you love somebody until you are a giver, not expecting anything in return. Until you can make any sacrifice. That is the kind of love every minister of God must have. It is when you have that type of love that you can truly take care of the two groups of believers. The sheep and the lambs. And there are many ministers of God that instead of taking care of the sheep and the lambs of God, they sit down and they raise courses on members of their congregation. Amen. Praise God. There are members of congregation that fear their pastors more than they fear God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you have special access to the pastor because of what he gets from you. Your access to the pastor is determined by what he gets from you. There are some people he prays special prayers for. And there are some that cannot even see him, though he is their pastor. Two groups of people are in the church. He calls them the sheep and the lambs. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Who is a sheep? And what is a sheep? We all know what a sheep is. Is that species of domesticated animals that have a horn. There are two groups of them. There's the goat and there's the sheep. Correct? Among those two animals, 
the nature of the sheep is what uh, makes clear the characteristic of God's children. The, the, the nature, the characteristics, what differentiates the sheep from the goats. Also, let us know the two groups of human beings on earth. In Matthew 25, he said you will separate the sheep from the goats. The sheep go to heaven and the goats, what do they do? Fire. So, so and, and, and the matured one is called the sheep and the baby sheep is called the lamb. The matured other one, goat, the matured one, the baby goat is called what? Kid. Stop calling your children kid. My kids are at home. That means you are a goat. If anybody call you say, how now? How are the kids? Tell I said, I'm not a goat. I don't have kids. I have lambs at home. Amen. Nobody wants to be a goat. God hates the spirit of goats. I didn't say you should not eat goat. My best meat is a goat. Amen. Nobody wants to be identified as a goat because of the characteristic of a goat. The sheep is known for a, the obedient lifestyle. Innocent lifestyle. The submissive lifestyle. The lifestyle of a sheep is a life of obedience to the master. It's also known for always following leadership. It follows leadership. Who has ever seen, you know, a herd of sheep moving? The leader is in front, another sheep. As it they go, if he jumps an obstacle and jumps over it, even if the shepherd removed the obstacle, all the sheep will repeat what the first one did. When they reach that spot, all of them will jump. When they reach that spot, all of them will jump. Why? Our leader jumps, so we too will jump. But they're good. But, 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 when he reached there, he goes, what do you make them? They jump. He must argue small first until the shepherd give her. Power, come on, move. Then he will start to move. You are a goat. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are talking about the new birth. When you are born again into the body of Christ, you become matured, not because of your physical age. A 70-year-old man that gave his life to Christ today, he is a baby. You are a lamb. Spiritual baby. So, so your, your, your age is not determined by your physical age, your maturity in the spirit. It's not determined by your physical age to say, I am 60 years old. I am this. No. It is, when did you give your life to Christ? And not just giving your life to Christ. When did you get born again? And I'm talking to revelated people. You are not born again until you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Am I correct? I have proved that. Praise the Lord. You are not born again until you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The day you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that is your birthday, spiritual birthday. That's your spiritual birthday. And a lot of us make mistake. Your years in Christ is not determined by the day you started going to church. You may have been, you may have been going to church since the day they born you. And yet, you are not yet in Christ. And church, I have said it before, you may be a church member, but, not be, but may not be a member of the church of Jesus Christ. Why? 
because the church of Jesus Christ is not a physical body, it's a spiritual body. And you join it by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. You have to understand. And a lot of us that are ministers, that are leaders, God by experience has caused me to know certain things. Having been pastor in this church for the past 15 years, and a church that has experienced diverse and clear manifestations of the Spirit. God has given me the opportunity to meet wife ministers from the day they were born into the body of Christ to bring them up and see them stand and function in their ministries. Therefore, I can be a very good matron, spiritual midwife. And therefore, I am in position to say some things that can help ministers. Hallelujah. There are churches that, 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 that have frustrated the move of God in their midst because the minister was ignorant of this fact we are sharing today. Hallelujah. There are ministers, pastors that have killed gifts that were coming up because they did not, you know, Take note of this thing we are sharing today. Take note. There is the sheep and there is the lamb. It is the lamb that grows to become a sheep. And just like a physical bed is messy, so also the spiritual bed also is messy. When I say messy, the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 speaks about different manifestations, different administration, and different operations of the Spirit when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There are experiences you receive that people who are not well-schooled will begin to look at when somebody has just received the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is dealing with that person and a blind pastor sometimes will say that person is possessed and begin to conduct deliverance. You see? And there are pastors that when a gift is starting, they kill that gift with fear. They use fear. Amen. They scare the person by the utterances, by certain carnal standards they have set. Do you know what the Holy Ghost is? I have a pastor that has graduated from not having Holy Ghost at all in 1995. I was under his ministry and then the ministry had no pastor. There were four of them exalted brethren. They called them exalting brethren. They were pretending to be humble. You know, they, you, know you can act to humility. So that people will see until you are humble. Meanwhile, there is an agenda you have. And I happened to be in that church for seven months at Shomolu here in Lagos. And the pastor said he didn't have Holy Ghost because he designed what he feels. When you have the Holy Ghost, you should be a superman. Do you know who the Holy Ghost is? When you come there and say, I have the Holy Ghost, he will look at you. The laugh, he will laugh at you. You will go back and repent that you say you have the Holy Ghost. You, 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 you. Then, then he will come to the pulpit and use big, big grammar. He's a lawyer. And finish you like this for telling him that you have the Holy Ghost. He said, we are still believing the Holy Ghost. Lord, give me Holy Ghost. Lord, give us Holy Ghost. Lord, give us Holy Ghost. Well, that was the attraction that attracted me to that church because I was in another dead church. And I needed revival. And so when I had them, believers of this enter message, and then they were saying Holy Ghost, I said, hey, another place I like. I want Holy Ghost. But when I got there, the idea of the Holy Ghost was far from what it should be. I remember I told him, I said, sir, I know when I receive the Holy Ghost. And it's not for you to confirm to me whether I have the Holy Ghost or not. I have the Holy Ghost. Of course, there were no other people like, anyway, that young man 
I don't know because I left him since 1995, December, and a few years after, I now heard that he's not just only the pastor of that church, but he's now having an, a, a dispensational ministry as the one that takes over in the line of William Brown. So the first thing I ask them is, I say, ah, I heard that your brother, brother, so so, he's not only pastor now, he's even now claiming this. When did he receive the Holy Ghost? I hope he has received the Holy Ghost. And the member was asking me, hey, you, uncle, do you have the Holy Ghost? I said, sure. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Praise the Lord. That song says, oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Foretaste, it means the glory we are expecting, I am already testing it in advance. Until you have that testimony, you will not know. But whatever it is, they use their carnal mind to give a picture of what the Holy Ghost should look like. Such that when somebody is receiving the Holy Ghost in God's own ordained way, you miss it. Church, I preach a message that I titled the gospel according to nature. Understand the things of the spirit through nature. The same way we physical birth is that is how spiritual birth is. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When a baby is born, he is messy. Very, very messy. When you see our gifted brothers here now, those, because I have told you that once you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, a gift must operate. If you have not, if you are not operating any gift, that is nine of those gifts in First Corinthians chapter twelve, and you have received an experience, and you are not operating any gift, it is not that you don't have it. You have it, but you have failed to identify it, and it is always because of where you are worshiping. You are not able to identify which part your gift determines the part you play in the body of Christ. Your gift determines, defines your ministry. I have a call. I have a call. And all the people know is pastoral call. Gather people and pastor them. That is not the only gift in the Bible. Everybody cannot be a pastor. Go call me. Go call me. Go call you. The evidence is the gift you have. Because it is the gift you have that you will use to serve him. Praise the Lord. But before that gift will manifest, you will have all manner of experiences depending on what the gift is. Especially the gift of the word of knowledge. The gift of prophecy. Especially that gift. Especially that gift. Because the gift of the word of knowledge is the commonest one. The denominations picking examples from the Bible look at the gift of speaking in tongue as the evidence of the Holy Ghost. We have proved it in the Bible, we have proved it here that the evidence that you have received the Holy Ghost is not speaking in tongue. Have that nailed very well in your brain. Amen. Praise the Lord. The commonest one that every believer has is the gift of the word of knowledge. That is the one that every believer has it. What is the gift of knowledge? The word of knowledge is the ability to know something. And it comes supernaturally. And I say it comes in four ways. It comes by a vision. Or it comes by a dream. Or it comes by an audible voice you will hear. Or it comes like an inspiration, a thought, a very loud thought. Every one of us here, you the dream. Every one of us here, if you are not dreaming, you will see vision, you will hear a voice, oh, that thought, 
it will come like a thought. And when the thing happens, you say, ah, hey. He'll be like, say, hey. He'll be like, say, hey, that thing, wait, I think, I think, I think, I think. Now he'll be this, oh. Praise the Lord. Every one of us. Now, now the gift of prophecy is another gift that is so common also in the church. Especially a church that is a praying church. I didn't say the office of a prophet. The office of a prophet is different from the gift of prophecy. A prophet is one that has the ability to inquire. But the gift of prophecy, the person does not go to ask God, Lord, what should I tell the church today? He's just sitting down and the anointing will hit and wow! And start to speak in tongue and maybe interpret. And give tongues, say the Lord. He did not prepare for it. He was not thinking over it. It is a gift. It may come and it will come when he, God, desires, decides to use it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, now when that gift begins, amen, if you are not properly in school, you pastors, there is a tendency for you to think when God is trying to get himself used to that person, there is a tendency for you to say that this is the devil, is possessed. Why is it that every, 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 every program now in the fall eh? every program now in the sleep for church shame not catch you now as you sleep for church sir. on Sunday morning eh? stand up stand up now what happened you cut me off with your sleep what happened you are seeing vision eh Give me your. Be going around here. This line, only this line. Go, turn around. Make sure anybody where they sleep, knock your head for here. Till I close. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Every service is done with father, bra and scatter. She's sitting down somewhere here. Uche. God bless you. I will not come so that you will not fall. <laughs> eh? Praise the Lord. If you are in some of these dead end time message churches, they will say you are possessed. You see? I know she prophesied today. Eh? It was deliberate. I had it. It was deliberate. I didn't give you a microphone. Because you will say nothing. I know you are going to say, you know, something is happening. You know why? Because you are battling with that anointing. So, you will be struggling. You will not allow the spirit to say what you want to say. And I don't get time for your own today. That's why I didn't stop them to give you the microphone. I was hearing you. I was, I was hearing you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now, 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 you will say that she's possessed if you are not properly schooled, including church members. Hallelujah. What is it? It is the new birth. Was she experiencing that before? No, let me ask her husband. If I start to talk to her now, the fire will fall on her. Where is the husband? Let me. I don't want to use her for example. Where is Uche's husband? Eh? Give <laughs> him there. Give me microphone. Give me microphone. Come forward, sir. Was she manifesting that anointing before? No, sir. It was just after your administration. After she had the normal baptism of the Holy Ghost, and then the other baptisms, other yeah, the prayers you offer to.